So, uh, <clears throat> so there was this woman praying. She was deep in prayer. And the Lord appeared to her and said, my daughter, I love you. I'm here to re grant you your request. What is it that you request of me tonight? Ask anything. And the woman said, Lord, I've never been to Hawaii. I would love to go to Hawaii. And Jesus said, oh, that's no problem. Tell me what day you want to go and I'll give you a plane ticket. She's like, no, Lord, no, no, no. I'm I would never fly. I'm so scared of flying. I could never fly. So the Lord said, that's okay. Just tell me what day you want to go and I'll give you a ticket for a cruise ship. She's like, no, Lord, that's even worse. I am so afraid of the water. That's, that's my worst fear is drowning. She's like, Lord, can't you just make me a highway from California to Hawaii? I love to drive. I wouldn't have any problem driving. And the Lord said, no, that's, now you're being unreasonable. She said, that, that, that would just, the logistics would be horrific. It would affect so many people's lives. It would just, it's not reasonable. You have to ask me for something reasonable. So a woman said, Lord, can you make my husband more sensitive to my needs? Can you make my husband more un understanding towards me? And the Lord looked at her and said, okay, how many lanes you want on that highway? <laughs> so <laughs> uh, when I tell that joke uh, to couples, every wife laughs. Uh, not every husband gets it, but every wife gets it. And um, I, I wish I could give you encouragement. All I can tell you is we try. <laughs> we, we really try, but we fail so often, but you know, this video, um, is for husbands. So I really can't, I, I don't know what it feels like to be a woman any more than Dylan Mulvaney knows what it feels like to be a woman. <laughs> so all I can give you is advice. I've heard my wife who has a lot of wisdom give to my daughter and my daughter-in-laws. Your husband is not and cannot be your savior. Everything you're looking for can be found in Jesus Christ and in Jesus Christ alone. And once you can understand that concept and build a deep personal relationship with Jesus, then everything else becomes a little easier. Now, I was going to exegete uh, Ephesians chapter 5 and 1 Corinthians chapter 7 on marriage, but I really feel like the Lord wants me to speak to husbands tonight. And uh, I don't have a lot of time, and I imagine a lot of you guys don't have a lot of time, so I just want to share share a scripture verse and then stories that I've, 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 see, I've heard about and seen in my life that reflect that verse. The verse is Ephesians 525 St. Paul says husbands love your wives like Christ loves the church and gave himself up for her there's four words in the Greek that the ancient Greeks used for love and one of them was agape when the Bible says for God so loved the world he gave his only begotten son he's using the word agape it's a sacrificial, unconditional love. I'm going to do this because I love you and expect nothing in return kind of love. Um, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's agape love. And that's what we're called to love our lives, our wives like. Like Christ loved us and died for us. And many men will say, oh, well, what about my wife? If she don't love me, I'm, if I, she don't love me unconditionally, I'm not going to love her unconditionally. Well, it's called unconditionally because it doesn't matter what the other person does. And you know what? The Bible doesn't tell her to love us unconditionally. The Bible tells husbands, love your wife like Christ loves the church. It tells wives, submit to your husband. It's two different commands. So how do we love our wives unconditionally 
one of my favorite movies and I think every guy watching this could relate to how much we love this movie. It's a true story. Um, Jim, uh, Jim Braddock. Yeah. Jim Braddock. True story about Jim Braddock, Jersey boy from North Bergen, New Jersey. I didn't grow up too far from there growing up in Newark and Irvington. Uh, true story, world heavyweight champion, but how he was down on his luck during the depression, broke his hand, had to work on the dock with a broken hand and he did it for his wife and his children. And there, there's a scene that always gets me uh, when he made a comeback, because he was just an average boxer and he was making a comeback and he got the title shot and they're like, man, you fight different. What's the difference? And he said, well, now I know what I'm fighting for. And they said, what's that? And he said, milk. He said milk because he lost his kids because he couldn't provide food for them. So he had to send his kids away to family members. And every guy can relate to that. You know, I think every man watching would step in the ring with a heavyweight champ if it meant it was going to save their wife and their children from something bad. And that's noble. But we also get kind of glory, you know, being a heavyweight champ, that would be cool and be fun getting in a ring, you know, on TV. But then there was a movie a little cornier, well, a lot cornier than Cinderella Man I happened to watch. I don't know how I got suckered into watching this one, but because it was a true story, it had my interest too. And it was called The Notebook, and if you're familiar with that, James Gardner, I liked it, always liked him as an actor. May he rest in peace. Uh, and he, he started in it, so I checked it out. And it was a true story, if you didn't see it. It was a pretty cool story how the wife got dementia and the husband was old. He couldn't take care of her, so he had her in a home. But he went and seen her every day, even though she didn't remember who he was. And he would tell her stories about their life. And she loved hearing the stories. She was like a little kid listening to the stories. And every once in a while, she would come in and out of it. That was unconditional. He got nothing in return. He got nothing physical. He got nothing, nothing he loves her unconditionally but the greatest story I've ever heard about unconditional love and I, I've been googling this all week uh, when I thought this was gonna be a long hour video you know an exegete I wanted to tell the story and, uh, and I can't find it I heard it over 30 years ago on uh, focus on the family and dr. James Dobson was so touched by the story he had the gentleman on and the man came on his show and told the story that touched Dobson so deeply. And, you know, I could tell Dobson, you know, he's like me. He can hear Dobson's voice crackling. I'm getting a lump in my throat. And it's just a beautiful story of unconditional love. You see, this young man married the most beautiful woman you ever see. He was head over heels with her. She was gorgeous, smoking hot. And she got some kind of disease where she became paralyzed and couldn't move, you know. I mean, she she was alert mentally, but she could maybe smile a little bit, but she really couldn't talk. She could make tiny little expressions. Like he could tell when she was happy or sad or, or in pain, but she couldn't talk. She couldn't walk. She was like a baby. He had to take care of her. And all his friends and family was like, you know, you gotta put her into a home. You can't do this. And he said, no, I, I promised her for better or worse, sickness and health. And he never left her and he kept he kept her with her literally literally took her to church with him and had to carry her like a baby and sit sit him next to her in the pew he would literally carry her into a grocery store and put a pillow down in the cart so she could go grocery stop and he never left her side he had a job he worked from home and he never left her side and he said you know we used to get strange looks from people and I would make a joke about it and I could see that she was smiling like she thought it was funny and that was like our humor we had we still had that humor between us and uh, he told Dobson he took her everywhere took her to the movies and people would just give him the odd strangest looks but he didn't care what everybody else thought because he had got be loved his wife you know and I'm, I'm trying to find that story if anybody knows this person or anything about it please put it in the comments because I guarantee you the love that that man showed his wife is more powerful than any medicine any doctor could have given her. So if there was any way that that woman was going to be healed, that love would have broke through and healed her. So 
and she will be healed. Now, maybe not in this life, but she'll be healed in the next life, I'm sure, because that man read her the Bible every day, took her to church every Sunday, and loved her with the unconditional love that we can only receive from God. And he was a Christian man. You can't give something you don't have. If you don't have the love of God in your heart, you can't give the love of God. You know, so um, when Jesus says, love your wives like Christ loved the church, remember that story. And now, I don't want you thinking, because I'm up here and I tell these cool stories, and I know the Bible pretty good, that I've obtained something I have. I haven't, <laughs> you know, I've been married 38 years, uh, and I've made a lot of mistakes. You know, I've been following the Lord 38 years, and I've made a lot of mistakes. So I'm just sharing with you what I've learned over the over the years. I mean, just like two weeks ago, my boss was giving me what I'm sure he thought was constructive criticism. And as I'm looking to him, and he's thinking I'm taking it all in, all I could picture myself was giving him a right cross, punching him in the mouth. <laughs> and, uh, you know, because I wasn't in the spirit, I was in the flesh. You know, he caught me out a bad day where I wasn't, you know, in, walking in the spirit, I was walking in the flesh. You know, but I pulled it back, you know, that that's the old man, you know, growing up in Jersey, that's how we settled arguments, a punch in the mouth, you know. But what I'm saying is we we all grow and we learn. And uh and what's funny is we're talking about husbands and wives. The day before I had that thought of punching my and he's a great guy, he's a good boss. I, you know, it was just a split second thought because he was annoying the heck out of me. <laughs> but the day before, I remember I got my wife so mad, she was steaming mad. I, I, I forgot what I did, but she was so mad at me. I guarantee you, she was thinking about punching me in the mouth, <laughs> but she didn't. And we probably don't even, I don't remember what we were arguing about and she don't remember. But what I'm saying is just because you see us guys out here talking about the Lord doesn't mean we're doing any better than you. We're just, you know, we're just beggars who found a king giving out bread and we're walking this walk together. I'm just a regular blue collar guy, just walking this walk, sharing my experiences with you, sharing what I've learned. And what I've learned is we can do all things through Christ who strengthens, strengthens us. What I've learned it's, there's nothing greater than love. Love never fails. But God gives us some tools on this earth, you know. Every Christian can read their Bible. The Bible itself says it's, it's, it's a double-edged sword that, that pierces through the bone and the marrow in our hearts, in our bodies, rather. It transforms our mind. You could read the Word of God every day and ask Him to transform your mind to become more Christ-like so you can love your wife like Christ loves us. Every Christian can do that. Every Christian can ask for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Ask the Lord to stir up, to stir up that spirit that we had gotten us when we were baptized in the Word. Stir it up. And you know, it's exciting to have all those spiritual gifts for spiritual warfare. But all through 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14, when St. Paul's are telling us about the charismatic gifts, he keeps emphasizing, but the greatest thing is love. So when you, when you get the stirring of the Holy Spirit, it doesn't just stir up your spiritual gifts. It stirs up and gives you the fruits of the Spirit. And the greatest fruit of the Spirit is love. Every Christian can ask you for this. Now I'm going to talk to my Catholic brothers and sisters because... We're the only Christians that can have this. Jesus said, if you eat my flesh and drink my blood, I will abide in you and you will abide in me. So when we go and get that Eucharist, he's abiding in us in such a personal, deep way. And again, he transforms us. He's in us. His love is in us. And this is how we're able to love. And another thing us Catholics can do is go to confession. James tells the church, if any of you are sick, call the elders. The original Greek word was presbyterius, where we get the word uh, priest from. Call them and let them anoint you with oil and confess your sins and you'll be forgiven and you'll be healed. Go to confession and you'll be healed. You know, because it's hard to love when you're hurt. There's an old saying, hurt people hurt people. But confession is the way God heals us. And even, even when I was a Protestant evangelical, when, when there would be little revivals breaking out here and there, we would always feel the need to confess to one another. You know, it's just God made us that way. <laughs> you know?
you know? So as Catholic Christians, confess your sins to the priest when you need to get to the Eucharist as often as you can. And love your wives like Christ loves the church. God bless and stay Catholic.